Hey everyone, welcome to this newest video. So in today's video, I am going to cover one of the announcements from VMware Explore 2024 in Las Vegas, which was held in the last week of August 2024. So the conference was mainly focused on what VMware now calls private cloud. So VMware had a focus on everything cloud, hybrid cloud, if you will, uh, for a while now with offerings like VMC on AWS, uh, GCVE at Google, but also AVS at, uh, at Microsoft. So what I kind of announced this, uh, this conference was that there's a general focus on uh, private cloud and they want to become, and that was the literal words of Hawk 10, the CEO of VMware or of Broadcom, sorry. Uh, they want to have a AWS-like experience in your private data center. We also know in the last year, uh, due to some of the, um, um, well, uh, developments that they sold off the end user computing business unit, they also kind of spun off the security related uh, solutions like Carbon Black. Uh, so their, their major focus nowadays is on VCF. And that was also a kind of the main, uh, the main um, a talking point throughout the general session. VCF, VCF, VCF. Now in this session, I wanna cover VCF 9, the, the newest version of VCF that was announced, and basically go through some of the announcements and some of the new features that were announced. Please note that we're recording this video in September 2024. Um, VCF 9 is not available yet. So um, what I'm gonna do is go through the platform. So VCF is a platform. Um, and talk through some of the innovations that have been announced and also kind of go through what value that means from a customer perspective. So uh, let's, let's dive into the basics first. What is VCF? So basically VCF is a platform that includes all of the, um, the individual solutions that form a virtual data center. And looking at the different layers of that for instance uh let's well let's start with the with the with from the ground up so we have the compute side of things uh, so this is basically the hardware provided by your oems uh, we have networking and we have storage so these are basically some of the the, the base principles that that form the infrastructure layer and looking at compute, they still work with the major OEMs. One of the things that stood out from the general session is that NEC, for instance, uh, a hardware supplier and OEM, we don't really see an EMEA that much is part of the uh, ecosystem as well. Um, next to, you know, Dell EMC or Dell Technologies nowadays, HPE, so the, the ones that you would expect uh, are still there. Then looking at the networking side of things, um, one of the things that is part of that platform is NSX, and NSX will continue still to be um, uh, one of the core solutions um, of, uh, of VCF. And you have the, the storage side of things, where part of the platform is um, vSAN, but there were some announcements around vVols as well. Now, one really important aspect of the platform uh, itself and all of the announcements was that there's a, a, a big focus on everything GPUs uh, when it comes to the partnership with NVIDIA, but also the things that were announced around Intel. And I'll cover Intel in a bit. So on top of that platform, we have our trusted hypervisor. So that's still the vSphere hypervisor. And on top of that, we have some solutions to manage the infrastructure. And we'll start with vCenter. So these two are still part of what we used to know as the vSphere platform. So vSphere is still part of VCF, vCenter is still part of VCF, but on top of that, you have added value solutions that will help you to get the most out of that private cloud platform. And um, the first is the ARIA suite. So ARIA does two, mainly two things. First of all, it does operations. So the solution formerly known as ARIA operations, still called that, is part of that stack, but also automation. So what you can do with the automation is the same we knew, uh, we've known for, for a while now. You can create those blueprints, those workflows to generate, uh, to build those, uh, those virtual machines or those virtual applications. 
Now on top of that, I already named uh, NSX. NSX is part of this as well. So we have NSX, but also um, we have the AVI load balancer. Right, so kind of this on a very high level is what the, um, the, the VCF bundle entails. So it's basically, basically a solution that allows you to kind of build that private cloud scenario uh, on-prem um, using the entire platform um, and giving your end users or your developers that kind of um, hyperscaler-like experience. So they can build their vApps, they can build their, uh, they re can request a database or request something else using the microservices uh, that can run on top of that um, and are part of that platform. Now, this is basically all focused on the infrastructure and spinning up the apps, but you need you know, workloads to get the most out of the platform. And this is where we have basically um, the Tansu platform. One of the um, uh, things also announced during um, Explore was Tansu platform 10. I won't be covering Tansu platform 10 here, uh, but there was a large number of, uh, of new features and functionality that, that really enriched the platform. And the second thing that was announced is the new private AI foundation uh, version. So Chris Wolf covered a, a, like a large number of new features and functionality uh, that, yeah, that, that ensures that we can run any type of AI solution on top of the platform as well. Uh, examples of that were, for instance, the deep learning VM, uh, which allows you to automatically spin up a new deep learning virtual machine using uh, ARIA automation um, and give you access, direct access to, to models, to tweet and tune models, but also allow you to spin up, automatically spin up chatbots. So really powerful when it comes to that feature and functionality. So this is VCF. VCF now includes Tonsu as well, uh, but that's more of a workload platform and allows you to run those cloud native applications in a modern way and allows you to run uh, or to, uh, to basically embed your platform engineering solutions there as well. And you have the private AI uh, foundation solutions that run on top of that as well. So private AI um, is mainly powered by NVIDIA, but there are also possibilities to run uh, private AI uh, solutions on top of Intel CPUs, for instance. So, uh, and they're also working with AMD to, uh, to, to basically pull off the same. Now, this is the base platform. And we're going to talk about the, um, uh, the announcements. So VCF9 pros promises a large number of, uh, of added value solutions. And there's a couple of them that I want to highlight, which get me really enthusiastic. Um, what kind of stands out is the way that you would usually uh, build a, wor a workload on top of the platform is based on virtual machines. That was the way we used to do it for a while now. You either automated the, the build of your vApps or your virtual machines uh, using a, uh, a workflow, or you would manually create those virtual machines. But one of the uh, announcements was that there's a new solution called the VM service. And the VM service basically allows you to create virtual machines like you would used to on a um, container basis. So um, the, uh, within Kubernetes, you are able to create new containers based on uh, on um, uh, 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 kubectl based um, um, commands, and what you are now able to do so as well with the VM service. Using the VM service, what you can do now is use the same kubectl commands to spin up a virtual machine instead of doing that for just containers and run those workloads natively on, on the, the hypervisor. Uh, and what's really cool here is that you can fully automate the, the build of those machines. You can fully integrate that with HashiCorp Packer as well to spin up machines from the base image or from the operating system, the, the configuration of the machine, to all the way to um, installing applications, installing SDKs, frameworks, whatever you need to get that virtual machine and that application ultimately uh, spun up and ready to be used. So I think that's really, really powerful. And you'll definitely hear us talking more about the VM service in the, uh, in the upcoming months. 
Now, another great example of added value solutions is if you look at the entire stack, uh, and let's kind of start with from the, from the ground up. I think uh, one of the mo most important aspects of the platform is the availability and also recoverability. So another uh, example of an announcement is that Visa, Visa now uh, supports recoverability from vSend data store to vSend data store. So you can easily replicate data from one uh, data store to another in case of a disaster. One of the most powerful aspects, I think, of vSAN is the uh, ability to dedupe inline or to dedupe on your data store uh, most of the, uh, the data that is stored there. Because we all know that you know, storing um, as many VMs as possible on a data store is one thing, but most of those VMs have a similar footprint, maybe even use the same base image to, to get spun up. And what you definitely want to do is, you know, get Red, uh, get rid of all, uh, all of the overhead that comes with, um, uh, with duplicate uh, blocks. So uh, dedupe has been altered a bit or has been improved and there's now a global way of, uh, of implementing dedupe policies that lets you reduce the footprint of your, uh, of your VMs on a global scale. So very, very powerful. And I think this is another great example of how a single solution like vSAN, which is part of the whole platform, uh, contributes to the success of the platform. Because if you run your workloads on top of it and you run it in a private cloud, you still want to have the same um, insurance that those workloads can run uh, and can be available when needed, but also can be recovered when needed. Now, let's shift gears a bit and talk about extensibility. So one thing that's really cool, and I think when looking at performance, but also TCO of a platform, so the total cost of ownership, is that there's now support for NVMe memory tiering, which means that if you store those virtual machines on a NVMe-based tier, uh, some of the, um, the, the NVMe drives you use could be you know, more uh, expensive than others. Um, and being able to, to store those components of your, uh, your virtual machines on like one tier or another, uh, can save you money, and I think this is uh, this is definitely something that's uh, that's really interesting for um, you know um, uh, VDI use cases where you run certain uh, workloads on powerful uh, performance-based storage, but you know in some cases virtual machines that that require less performing um, uh, storage can automatically be tiered to different uh, to different tiers. So that's that's really powerful. Another cool feature that was released was the support for Intel's trusted domain extension. And what it basically means is that you could use Intel's um, feature set in CPUs uh, from a, like, to increase the, 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 the privacy sensitivity and the security sensitivity of your platform. Because Intel will ensure you, uh, by using the, the security features in their CPUs, that you are actually running on a platform that it says it is. And um, I think spe specifically when looking at sovereignty of, um, of data, and nowadays that's even more important, uh, especially when looking, for instance, at AI-related um, uh, use cases where the data um, that's privacy sensitive needs to be stored on a platform that's compliant um, to, uh, to regulations as well. Um, that's, that's really important. And Intel's security feature set into their, uh, um, in their hardware will help you to become compliant and to, uh, to increase the compliance and the security uh, uh, measures of your, uh, of your platform. So again, I think a great, uh, a great example of how the extensibility of the entire platform contributes to, in this case, security and privacy sensitivity. So I know it's, it's already a, a great list of solutions and features and announcements that we covered, but I, there's still one I want to cover as well. So as we know, the focus of VCF9 is on private cloud. So it's private cloud first, and um, to get that real private cloud experience, you need uh, some automations to be in place as well. And we know that ARIA operation and automation already do a great job there, but um, what they announce as well is the support for native virtual private clouds. And what that means is that you can spin up a private cloud-like solution, uh, which automates the, the spin up of vApps, but also automates the, the, the configuration of the network, for instance, assigning the right VLANs, uh, making sure that the right network policies are in place um, to give that end user or that customer or whoever will consume your platform uh, will get that um, that similar private cloud-like 
uh, experience. And I think that's just um, yeah, a really powerful feature to add to the list. Now, I know this is all a lot to consume and uh, below this video is a link to a blog post that we released as well, which covers all of the individuals, uh, individual uh, announcements uh, and also show what the, you know, what the added value for you as a customer is. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. For now, thanks so much for watching and we'll definitely see you in the next video.